Namaste everyone. Uh, thank you for joining in this video. So this video was uh, made upon a request by a few students of, of the basic foundation Vedic Astrology course that we are having every Sunday. And uh, they made a request to, you know, to help them understand the Kal Purush Kundali. Okay. Now, uh, so this video is actually an attempt to, to help that cause. Okay. So the birth chart, which is you know, which is known as the Kundalini Kundali in Sanskrit, uh, the birth chart of a person, it represents the collective conscience of the self and the people around the person at the time of birth. Okay, so this is the reason that you know by looking at different houses of the birth chart and assuming them as the first house, the second house, and so on, we can almost find out everything about one's mother, right? So the fourth house and looking at the fourth house, you can say that, you know, you can find out things related to the, to the person's mother. Looking at the ninth house, you can find out things related to the person's father. Okay, then siblings, spouse, kids, and even friends and enemies. Okay. So uh, while creating a birth chart, we keep that zodiac as the first house, which is rising in the east when an event or a person is born. Okay. Now we apply the same formula for even the birth of a nation. Okay, you'll have charts for a nation, for example, to analyze the, the chart of India, we, you know, we draw the chart on the, you know, on the 15th of August, uh, 1947, at uh, 12 a.m., right, that gives us the chart, you know, the birth chart of India, okay, but then how do we create the birth chart of the earth, okay, so it is created by, you know, by creating the chart of the time in question, and uh, keeping that house as the you know as the first house where the Aries zodiac is placed. Okay, so <clears throat> what is happening is what I'm trying to imply is that you know whenever you create a chart, any random chart by keeping Aries as the first house, that is known as the Kalpurush Kundali. Okay, and uh, you know the point being. Why, you know, why are we having Aries as the first house? That is also important to know. Okay. So, you know, <clears throat> we, we know that, you know, we know that the zodiacs, they represent weather conditions. The planets represent the doshas, which are expressing themselves differently in different conditions. Okay. So what would have been the condition of the earth or even universe for that matter, when it, you know, when it just got formed, it was extremely hot and red. That is something that we have studied in high school geography. Okay. We all know that <clears throat> the universe came out of the Big Bang, which, you know, which means expansion from an infinitely dense, you know, red and hot point. Right. And as such, everything in this world, we know that everything in this world begins from a point. And uh, so did the universe, if we consider the Big Bang theory of creation. Okay. So this condition of, you know, of uh, the earth getting formed from something extremely hot and red. It represents the first zodiac of Mars, okay, that is Aries, when due to heat <coughs> and temperature of the sun, the energy stored inside due to the previous zodiacs of Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces, which are actually governed by Kapha and Vata, it began expanding towards, you know, uh, it began expanding outwards towards the peripherals. So what happens is that by that logic, the, the first house of Kalpurish Kundali, it captures the Aries zodiac, you know, thereby representing the expanding and hot energy when the world began its journey from a hot and dense point. And hence the name Kala, Kala means time. And Purush represents the male energy, which expanded to create Prakriti, okay? <clears throat> which, you know, the Shiva, Purush is Shiva, who expanded to, you know, to embrace Shakti or Prakriti or nature in an extremely tight embrace, okay? So what I'm trying to say is that this Kalpurush Kundali, it uh, represents the collective conscience of the world at any given time. And it has a cause and effect relationship with the conscience of individuals, you know, groups, societies, as well as nation. <laughs> okay. So what I'm, you know, what I'm trying to imply here is that every act that we perform has an effect on the collective conscience of the world and vice versa. We might not realize this fact, but this is a very straightforward fact that is, you know, that has been realized as well as experienced by all the, you know, all the enlightened masters and the siddhas who have walked this earth. Okay. But then there is another way of looking at the, you know, there is another way of looking at the Kalpurish chart. Okay. So since it is the position of the moon in a specific, you know, in a specific 
nakshatra which decides that a person is beginning one's life in which in and in which dasha i'm speaking about the vimshottari dasha vimshottari dasha is always considered by you know <clears throat> by from the nakshatra of the moon okay so what one can realize is that dasha of the earth's collective conscience keeps changing after every day as the moon changes its nakshatra every day okay so what it indicates that the collective conscience of the world is ever changing and it should essentially be taken into consideration while you know while analyzing one's individual chart right so we all know that you know saturn's transition from the you know from the 9th to the 10th zodiac of of kalpurush kundali on uh, the 24th of january 2020 it triggered an event of corona and associated events which actually cascaded into a slowing down of the economy and so on and it actually had a huge impact on one's birth chart delivering less materialistic things even if you know apparently promised by one's chart okay so from the individual perspective you know kalpurush kundalini uh, sorry kundali of a, you know of a native determines the status of doshas exactly at that point of time you know when that individual is conceived in the mother's womb okay so this is the reason that the first house of kalpurush kundali that is the house having aries which represents one's head okay and we know that uh, you know the the sign of aries also represents the most dominating constitution or wiring of the head and of the brain and the body okay and this sign it actually you know this first house it expands into a full fledged body so the second house that is taurus it represents head the third house the third zodiac which is gemini it represents arms the nervous system okay you know why nervous system because you know in gemini it depicts equal proportions of of vata pitta and kapha okay and so on and uh, you know exactly this is exactly in line with traits of different houses as depicted in the lagna chart right and since weather has a cause and effect relationship with with planets and zodiacs the first house of kalpurush kundli of a native depicts the most you know dominating weather condition exactly at the time of conception which will decide the future course okay so you know the chart of a native with mars in aries irrespective of wherever aries is there in the lagna chart would mean that the native's growth right from the formation of fetus would be high on mars okay and what does what does mars imply mars implies a lot of blood with good circulation okay so in other words the individual kalpurush kundli to the to the prakriti of the native you know it must be used for understanding the wiring of the body and the brain and even you know even psychology and conscience because of the cause and effect relationship with each other okay so this also means that in the time of conception matters much more than the time of birth conveying the importance of preparing self and spouse at least 6 months before planning a child you know that is the reason why you know why the ancient rishis and the seers they advised that one must go for pure sattvic lifestyle with total abstinence from you know from uh, tamasic foods or medicines like you know like alcohol or like cigarettes and things like that because these things are bound to affect the incoming generation okay and then you were to also remember that six months is just a figure okay depending upon the status of the female health one may need more time or may not need more time right this is more or less related to the you know related to the mental and, and the physical act, and the physical you know physical part of of the female's health okay now uh, you know how do we how do we use this kalpurush you know how do we use this this kalpurush kundali okay so this kalpurush kundali and the birth chart they are both important because you know they both represent the muhurta of different events right conception and birth and even those even if those events are closely interrelated okay so what happens is that uh, in the first case okay in the case of kalpurush kundali aries becomes the first house and uh, you know in the second case right if you consider the birth chart of a person okay suppose which is rising from which is rising from capricorn in that case you know <clears throat> that is capricorn is the house that is getting exposed first to the world outside the womb okay so the first house this house of capricorn it becomes the you know the most dominating aspect of psychology okay now if you look at you know if you look at predictions how you predict in this you know in this uh, in this scenario okay so uh, you know when the when the ascendant is moving okay suppose you know the kalpurush chart is starting from aries 
and then <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, suppose someone has a birth chart which is which is starting from Virgo, which is rising from Virgo. So what is happening is that the ascendant has moved. Okay, and the Rashi and Nakshatra, you know, for a different purpose, will now be deployed to a vague responsibility. Let us consider an example. For example, uh, in uh, in the Kalpurish Kundli, the tenth house, it belongs to Capricorn, which has the Shravan Nakshatra. Okay, and Shravan Nakshatra is a uh, Vishnu Nakshatra in a literal sense. And what it does is that it asks the native to pay attention to work. It is the nakshatra of listening. Okay, it asks the native to be prepared. You know, taking three steps or cautious steps to move about your workplace and so on. Now, suppose someone's you know, someone's uh, chart is rising from Scorpio. Okay, someone's chart is rising from Scorpio. So what is happening is that the shravan nakshatra is now becoming a part of the third house. Okay, so what it implies is that it is, you know, it is making the native listen to, you know, listen to more communication, what is being communicated, okay, absorbing more thoughts and taking courageous steps, okay, and if good planets are there in this nakshatra, it will make the native slightly submissive, okay, for example, if Jupiter is there in Shravan nakshatra, or if moon is there in Shravan nakshatra, the native will be slightly submissive in nature, okay. Now, suppose, you know, uh, the sixth house of the Kalpurush Kundli, it actually has, you know, the constellation, the, the zodiac of Virgo, okay, and uh, the constellation of Hasta in Virgo, it makes, you know, it makes a person overcome obstacles with creativity in hands, okay. Now, suppose, you know, <clears throat> someone has, you know, someone has Virgo in the, in the 10th house of, of his or her chart. So, what is happening is that this Hasta Nakshatra is also going to the 10th house and that can make the person into an artist, okay. Similarly, if you know if the if this Virgo is going into the third house, then this Hasta Nakshatra in the third house can make the native a good writer. Okay, now for a good writer, you need earthy planets. That means you need you need Mercury. Okay, to become a good writer. So that is you know that is how you will analyze the analyze the birth chart by using the you know by using the Kal Purush. Okay. So <clears throat> Purush in the first house, that means Lagna. It means your, you know, it means your discerning ability, discernment ability, the ability to distinguish between the between right and wrong. Okay. And Kalpurush Lagna is the health of organs in your body from the prakriti aspect. Okay. So the sun, you know, it is your atma. We know that the sun is atma. So if you consider the sun's sign, wherever the sun is placed, wherever Surya is placed, if you consider the Rashi of Surya as, as the ascendant. So it, you know, you are actually analyzing the soul from the, you know, you are actually analyzing the chart from the perspective of the soul as to how it is thinking, how it is progressing. Okay. Similarly, the moon represents your manas. Okay. So, you know, studying the mind or understanding the mind is very, very, you know, it is for studying or understanding the mind, it is very, very essential to analyze the moon chart. Okay. For example, if you have a malefic planet in the second house from moon, what it means is that you will not like to, you know, you will not like to go out to work. Okay, you'll not like to interact with people for good and for you know for for the purpose of work. Okay, so <clears throat> you know this is how this is how you will you'll try to this is just an example that I have given and this is how you'll try to examine the you know examine your own birth chart from the perspective of the Kalpurush Kundali. Okay, so that is it uh, in this video. I hope I have been able to make things clear. And uh, should you have any questions, I welcome your questions in the form of comments. You can also, you know, ping me on WhatsApp if you need a consultation regarding your chart. And, you know, if you need a perspective regarding your chart. And please join the course that I am, you know, I'm conducting every Sunday uh, on the foundations of Vedic astrology. I welcome your presence. I welcome, I graciously, I graciously welcome your presence in that course. Okay. So that's it from me. I'll see you soon in another video. Namaste, everyone. Om Guru Venamaha.